Las Vegas. This is Tina Drago. Today I have in the studio with me Leanna Oswald. She's a PhD pharmacist and she's with Roseman University. Did I even say that right? It's a PharmD pharmacist, but so pharmacy doctorate. Yeah. Pharmacy doctorate. Anyway, she's uber smart and she's here to talk to us today about about the senior health fair that Roseman University's pharmacy school is putting on, right? Yes, October 22nd, we're going to be having a senior health fair on our uh, Henderson campus. Do you have to be like really old or can you know middle-aged people go too? Middle-aged people can come as well. We're offering a plethora of free activities, but it is geriatric or senior-based care that we're looking at. So what are some of the things you're going to be doing for them? Well, we're going to have uh, the, the big draw that we have is it's open enrollment for Medicare uh, during this time period. So October 15th to December 7th, open enrollment for Medicare. So we're we uh, have a SHIP call center on campus, which is the State Health Insurance Assistance Program. Yes. And we are going to be um, offering the... Sorry. That's all right. Um, and we are going to be offering um, free Medicare screenings. So our students have been trained by SHIP uh, to be guidance counselors on Medicare plans, cost-effective Medicare plans. They're unbiased. They're not part of any company or anything like that. They're just screening to see what's going to be the most cost-effective. So here's my PSA folks listening out there in Las Vegas land or all of Nevada land. The the real truth of the matter is, is that if you have a... Humana, Caramore, Senior Dimension um, person selling you. They're going to tell you all the wonderful things about their program. And a lot of times they're going to admit the things that you may need. You know, you may need a heavy pharmaceutical uh, attachment, you know, a drug program. and Or you may need to have an exercise program or you may need something. And they all carry those, but they don't really give you the nitty gritty of what's good for just you. And so the ship people out there is wonderful because they get to be unbiased, right? They mm -hmm. get to look at the individual and say, hey, um, you know, you may need something more along this program line and, and guide you to where you go. That's a wonderful service. I know that um, last year, um, one of my really dear friends first time got on Medicare. It was so confusing. There's a lot of plans. There's uh, basically when you get onto Medicare, you're given a book, the Medicare and You book. Yeah. It's 150 pages of small print. It's a lot to read. Um, our students and SHIP guidance counselors, they know that book. They've read that book. Uh, they know the ins and outs of that book. They're also able to identify um, patients that may qualify for low income subsidy plans and not know it. Last month in August, um, our little call lab on campus saved a, a over $50,000 on an annual basis Get out of here. for the residents of That's Southern Nevada. Awesome. That is awesome because every little bit counts. And mm -hmm. most people, you know, when we retire, we're on a fixed income. I don't care if you've worked your entire life and you have a pension or stuff, it's still a fixed income. Yes. And and that's important. We all have to live within our, our means. And healthcare ends up being one of our largest expenses. Definitely. And there are there are a lot of programs even in the, in our state of Nevada that can help uh, when you hit the donut hole or you're unable to afford medications. There is help out there if you qualify in yeah. certain income levels that people don't know about. Um, our clinic, First Person Care Clinic, we actually have care coordinators that work with people on the donut hole, that work with people on patient assistance programs for, for their drugs, and that actually help them bridge that donut hole. And you don't know about the donut hole until you're in the donut hole. Yeah, you know? it's, it's not a good place to be. It's no. hard to pay for medications full out of pocket. It is. It really is. And and it's, uh, you know, what is it, like $1,700 you end up being exposed to or something uh, like around that? Around 1400 1400 like right yeah. around there, but it, it's it's a lot of money. It is. And if you can't get your, your drug or your prescription while, while you're in that donut hole because you can't afford to just pocket it out, um, you know, it becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to hear you have those resources. That's phenomenal. What else do you have there? Yeah, so we also are doing um, uh, medication therapy management. So if you want to bring all of your drugs with you or a list of all of your drugs, we'll go through those. We'll talk to you about how you're taking them, make sure you're taking them correctly, see if there's any duplications or anything like that that we can help with. Great service if you go to multiple doctors who may be prescribing multiple medications for you. We are also offering health Wait a screening. second. That service in and of itself is worth the drive down to your campus. 100%. It, it really, really is because, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that if, the, if their specialty doctor prescribes one thing and their primary care prescribes another, and if you're on any kind of anti-anxiety or something, these drugs conflict. They can, they can really easily conflict. So that service in and of itself... Yes. It's huge. And this is free. Again, uh, you could pay up to $50, $60 an hour to have something like this done. It's free. Um, and it's going to be performed by students who are overseen by pharmacists. And the students are within our pharmacy program. Uh, they've taken special courses to be able to do this. And so it's just a great benefit. That that is That in and of itself is wonderful. You know, a lot of people, we see this every day with our patients, especially our newly discharged patients from the hospitals and stuff, where they're taking, you know, 
seven, eight, nine, ten different drugs. And I'm going to tell you, you know, and I have no medical background, by the way. Um, I'm going to tell you, though, but if you're taking that many drugs, I will guarantee something is conflicting. You know, it, the odds are really high. Yes. And and it's important to, to know because, A, you're spending unnecessary money. And, and B, you know, it's not even it, if they conflict, sometimes they can just wipe each other out for and they don't even help you. I think also our students are trained right now on the most up-to-date clinical guidelines. So there may not even be a reason for you to be on certain medications now based on new guidelines that have been published for certain disease states like uh, hypertension or high blood pressure. Wouldn't that be fabulous? You go in there with all these drugs and you come out and you've got a fraction of them because you really don't need to take them to be healthier? We would only be making recommendations because we'd always want you to follow up with your doctor first. We would never stop anybody without having them go through their doctor first, but we can definitely help you better understand what may be a good therapy option for you. Beautiful. Okay, so what else? Uh, We also are going to be offering um, health screenings. So get your blood pressure checked, get your blood sugar levels checked, uh, get your cholesterol level all checked for free. Um, We are going to be offering immunizations. Uh, If you have a Medicare card, your um, flu shot will be free. Uh, We are also offering a limited amount of free vaccinations depending on how many people come out. Are you doing the chicken pox shot? Or not the chicken pox, the shingle shot? We do not have the shingle shot, unfortunately. That's a pretty expensive one. We couldn't get donated. Yeah, they they are expensive. And isn't it a live virus? It is live. I mean, that would be okay. We could still administer it even if it was live or not. But um, it, it's just cost-wise, we couldn't, uh, we didn't have enough, a big enough donor for okay. that. <laughs> got it, got it. So what else? What else are we doing here? Uh, we are also laminating red, white, and blue cards for free. So if you have your paper <laughs> red, white, and blue card, it sounds silly, but that can get damaged pretty easily. It's, and that's a free service that we're going to have there. It's not silly. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing because we have this little um, reader that we like scan all of our insurance cards into. And and you sometimes you get them and they are tattered up. They are abused. You know, you can't even scan them in. So yeah, get them laminated. That's cool. Yep, we want those protected. Uh, we have some light refreshments and snacks that are free as well if you come out. We have a free Roseman bag for the first 100 people uh, that show up, a nice cloth carry bag that's got Roseman on it. Nice. And um, oh, I'm, yeah. trying to, I'm blanking now. Oh, <laughs> what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, oh, do you do oh, fall? Pre- pre- yeah, your fall prevention? Yes, we have falls prevention check as well. So uh, this is uh, in coordination with the CDC. There's a steady study mm-hmm. where you can um, check, you do a series of um, just dance steps, moves, di- different, yeah. different kind of things like that <laughs> up and down out of a chair. And yeah. our students will assess to see what your fall prevention risk is. And if it's a, if you score a certain number, we're going to give you some recommendations to talk to your doctor about. That That's wonderful because do you have the step on people there? Yeah, it's yeah. not the step on people, but a group from a, a group uh, from being the, trained from. Yes. And, and that's really important because, you know, a lot of people um, and I'll probably be one of them as I get older. I'm not giving up my heels. I'm not giving up my like, you know, my cutesy shoes and and. That's how kind of how people fall and slip and or, or they don't understand that, you know, their balance is off or their gait's off and they can't walk as far or their stride. Um, so these are all wonderful things. Um, I actually had a group of my um, staff go on to the step on class. And a couple of the things that they said were like the biggest reasons people fall is um, their robe ties Mm-hmm. Like are hanging and they trip on their robe ties or um, they're wearing, you know, shoes that are slip that have slippery soles on them, like the leather, nice, cute leather bottom soles. And you have to get into the orthopedics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it rem- I just I laugh because I have a friend that's 92 years old. And she is always like dressed to the nines. And I'm like, and she just shuffles right along. And I tell her, I'm like, you know, you're going to have to get rubber sole shoes. And she just looks at me like I have a third eye. And she's like, that won't happen. Well, and there's other recommendations. If that's not going to change, can we do some other things to make sure that around the house is safe and that we can prevent falls as, as much as possible? So I'm I'm loving that program because that's a really that's a really good program that gets overlooked quite frequently. Um, so who are you going to have for your topics of discussion? All right, we have Dr. Lisa Rosenberg, who's from our med school, as well as Dr. Alvin Lin. They both specialize in uh, senior care and geriatrics, and they are going to be out uh, giving 30 minute uh, presentations on what well, like anti aging, health, yes. um, all those good things people should be looking at. Dr. Rosenberg is going to be talking about uh, how to prepare for a doctor visit. What are the things that you should bring to your oh doctor God, visit that so, so that you get important. the most out of your time? You know, when the doctor comes in, usually you've been waiting so long, you get really kind of like frustrated. Then your mind wanders. Then you like play a game of solitaire on your phone or something. And, and then by the time they come in, you forget most of the questions you ask for. We really encourage people to write down all their questions 
and when they come back because the doctor can only has a limited amount of time that they can really spend with you and they're reviewing their chart and they want to focus on on what they see as far as like your vitals and your signs and what you're there for but if you have questions i mean we always have people call back and go oh i forgot to ask for this prescription or i forgot to get this refilled or i forgot that write it down that's huge um if anything you know, yeah, they're going to be providing some cards that you can take with you to help to guide that visit to make sure that, again, it's effective, that you're asking the questions you want to ask and getting the answers right. and not leaving there like, oh, why didn't I ask that? Well, exactly, because you're paying good money to see your provider, so you should get the answers you need. Um, I always encourage people, especially my older um, patient population, to have kind of like a three-ring binder. Um, um, and to have all the medicine in there and to have, you know, like their diet plan in there and what they're doing for activities and then their questions or Q&A area. Um, because we're all we're all human. We all, you know, our minds go a mile a minute and we forget. And it's, it's really easy. And you want to get the most out of your uh, doctor's appointment. You yes. really do. Um, and just it, it, that that time is precious, and we know that the doctor's time is precious. Right. So if we can better utilize it, you'll be better prepared. That's a great one. I really like that. What's the time of the event? It's, it's from 10 to 2. So 10 to 2 on October 22nd at the Henderson campus, the Roseman University Pharmacy School. That Henderson campus address is 11 Sunset Way, Henderson, Nevada, 89014. If you have any questions, you can call 702-968-6615. They'll set up an appointment for you. And you can sit down with one of their trained unbiased Medicare consult counselors. And I think that's great because um, you don't want to be standing in a line out there. So if you can set up the appointment by calling 702 702- 968-6615. Um, you'll get to use your time more effectively. You'll probably get to see more options. And um, and I'm hoping you'll get a lot out of this. I'd hate the fact that you have to be 65 to go there. And, and you know, to, I want to go. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite there. Maybe. You don't have to be 65. <laughs> Definitely because you're, the Medicare part won't apply to you if you're 65. Yeah. But if you're under 65 and you want to come out and get some health screenings done, uh, see some of the services, sit in on those uh, um, mini lecture series with the um, doctors that will have pre- present. Excellent. Of course okay. you can participate. So um, I love the glucose and the blood pressure check because so many people bypass going to their doctor on a regular basis. Go to your doctor. Hear me. Go to your doctor. Um, and they think, oh, I got my blood pressure screened at Walgreens or I got my blood pressure screened at this health fair or I got my A1C checked. And really they need to because your A1C will change um, or you know your or your blood sugar level will change from what you ate the night before or what you ate for breakfast. So um, to get really accurate, you need to go to your uh, primary care provider and get that taken care of. But by having these screenings at these fairs, you are at least alerted to the fact that you know it's time or it's past time um, to start taking things serious. And I love that. Yes, we have actually the last health fair that we had on campus, we screened a a woman who happened to be at a blood pressure of 180 over um, 99 and did not even realize, uh, didn't have any symptoms at all of it. Uh, We got her into a doctor that day and got her taken care of. That's called the silent killer for a reason. Mm -hmm. And you know what, and, and I hate to say this, but more often than not, that happens. We've had health fairs where we've called ambulances mm-hmm. and we're like, you need to go to the hospital right now. You're in the middle of having a stroke. You know, you're, this is not good. And they don't get it. They, they just don't get it. And, um, you know, I wish people would take their, their health more seriously. And here I'm beating my Tom Tom, you know, I'm up on my soapbox, but you know, you only have one body. <laughs> Use it. 100% agree. And uh, we're excited to be able to provide this. Uh, We're excited to do it free of charge uh, for the people of Southern Nevada. And we just love to see everybody come out. Who's some of the people that are are working with you on this? So we are working with SHIP uh, on this. And then it's a whole university effort. So we have our College of Nursing as part of it. Our College of Medicine is part of this. And it's a, a joint effort across the campus. Fabulous. That That's really wonderful. So, at, okay, so... Is that everything on the health fair you want to get out? I can't find Alvin's topic. I'm okay. sorry. Jeff, I, you are going to have so much fun editing this. I apologize. That's I, all right. Let's talk controversial. Okay. What's so, controversial? So I know. Let's, <laughs> what do you think is controversial? Um, so a few weeks ago, the um, Surgeon General came out with an opiate restriction for providers. And um, how is the pharmaceutical industry handling that? 
Well, I don't know that I could ever speak for the whole pharmaceutical industry, but I think that we definitely have a problem here in yes. the U.S. We have a problem in Nevada. Uh, yeah. with opiate um, prescribing, um, with how they're being used, with how they're being abused. And so I think anything that's geared towards helping this problem is good. I know that that um, this trickle-down effect of responsibility and stuff is kind of landed square on the pharmacist's shoulders. And they're the ones now having to police doctors prescribing or over-prescribing. And I really don't think that's fair. Um, you know, I don't think it's fair to make any one entity, but the truth of the matter is, is if the doctors are prescribing it and the pharmacists aren't filling it, there's a problem. And a lot of times doctors don't check the DEA log. By the way, we have a registry for controlled drugs here in the state of Nevada, and if somebody's abused it or they get, they may get red flagged or they've, they've gone doctor shopping where they get prescriptions from a variety of doctors, all those things show up on that, that DEA. So um, it's important that the pharmacists and the doctors work together. We actually have pharmacists on our med team. So when we work with patients, especially our more complex patients, um, you know, we have the doctors, the nurse practitioners, the medical assistant staff, and we have pharmacists that we actually look to, and also the specialists. But the pharmacists are really key. They're integral in helping us um, with fine nuances of their lab results and the medications that they're taking. So I have to say out there, really incorporate uh, your pharmacist into your medical plan. And I think understand that they're part of the healthcare team too. There yeah. may be a reason that the pharmacist is not comfortable filling a controlled substance medication for you. They may see some danger. Uh, there may also be a, a reason that uh, your doctor prescribed that medication and definitely have to work hand in hand, pharmacists, doctors, nurses, the whole healthcare team right. uh, to make sure that the patient is taken care of. And that's, that's wonderful. And I, I, I love that. For me, um, you know, it was different because when we started out, we, we incorporated a pharmacist right out of the, out of the gate because it just made sense to me, um, especially when it's their license on the fill and it's the doctor's license on the right. So, you know, um, they have to work together. And I think sometimes you forget that the pharmacist went to school for three or four years, depending on the program. Roseman were accelerated, so it's a three-year program, but, and they just studied the drugs. Right. They studied disease states that go along with those drugs, but they know the ins and outs of those drugs. Uh, other healthcare professionals may have had, you know, much less, a little six, six months. months or less <laughs> yes, on exactly. that training, which yeah. is a big difference. And they also have the doctors have all the reps coming in and out, the farm reps coming in and out, actually, you know, telling them what's so great about this one and what's so great about that. And, you know, so they're only, once again, they're only getting the good side of it. They're not getting the bad side of it. And if you see multiple providers, if you have a primary care and you have a specialist, you have a cardiologist or an endocrinologist or an oncologist or any of those ologists, <laughs> Um, along with your primary care, then the first thing you should really be thinking of is how how you're going to work well with your pharmacist because they're actually going to be the hub for your medication. They're going to be the place that's going to say, hey, listen, these doctors are prescribing drugs that maybe don't necessarily work the best together. Or may not be safe for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, li I like to think that you're being prescribed something uh, because the doctor wants to make it safe, but sometimes that pharmacist can catch where it may be safer not to take it or to be on something else. And right now, I mean, our, our clinic, um, we actually have, we're on the HIE and we are integrated with the hospitals, imaging centers, labs, and our specialists. And we go out of our way to see what other doctors are prescribing and bring it back. So we have a complete, accurate list of medication. We are unique in that regard. That is not the norm. That most, is very unique. <laughs> most doctors work in a silo. You know, they, they work on what they think is best for their patient and not really paying attention to what other providers are doing for that exact same patient. Pharmacies work that way as well. It's always uh, when we go out into the community and give some lecture series, it's always interesting to see people who are surprised that if you're filling at one chain of pharmacy and then filling something else at another yes. retail chain of pharmacy or company, that they, we don't see each other's systems. And so we <laughs> Hello? don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're going to Walmart for this drug because you can get it for four bucks and then you're going to Walgreens for this drug because you can get it for, you know, for four bucks and you're, and you're shopping around, you're actually doing yourself a large disservice. Mm -hmm. I would strongly recommend going to one pharmacist. And if you can get coupons or you can get discounts from other pharmacists, let them know. They'll Say, take them usually. They, yeah, they'll take them. They'll, they, they'll be, price match. Yep. Exactly. They'll, they'll do that. So it's worth an ask. It doesn't hurt. And then you know you're getting accurate um, information about your particular uh, combination of pharmaceuticals that best uh, fit your needs at mm -hmm. that time.
So, you know, I understand the shopping. I, I truly do. Every dollar counts, but you really have to do what's best for you. So I would always ask, and you'd be surprised. You really would be surprised. And there's also discount cards. I know we give out um, discount cards at our clinic all the time. Save people, you know, hundreds of dollars every month on their drugs. So look for that, too, from your provider. Yes, they're out there. Uh, just ask. Yeah, it, it's it's a matter of asking. So I love that. But you're you're right. Everybody works in a silo. I mean, you could get your if you get your drugs filled at like Walgreens and you're in Vegas, and then you go to New York, you can get it there because they're all on the same network. But if you go to CVS, they won't see it. It's true. Yep. And and again, like when you talk about the the shopping around for saving prices, I think that is something that a lot of people do because it's money. Yeah. Uh, and you might like different things about different stores that you're at, but if you can fill those medications all within one same chain either CVS Walgreens whatever it is that you want to go with and um, stick with it. I like the small it. independent ones <laughs> I do I'm a, I'm a fan for the little guy next door who like gives you that personal att- attention um, but that's just me. Yeah, although I think <laughs> in the in the right setting any any pharmacist is is, is able to offer that personal touch to yeah. you if you stick with them. And uh, yeah, because they'll know you. Mm-hmm. It's great to be known. You walk into you know your grocery store, your pharmacy, or your hairdresser. It's good to be known. Yeah, right? I have six years of retail experience, and I still see my patients out there uh, yeah. and around, and I still talk to them and ask them how they're doing. That that's wonderful. Um, you know, Liana, I really appreciate you coming in today. You've given us a lot of information. Let's recap this Roseman Senior Health Fair Saturday, October twenty second, ten a.m. to two p.m. on the Henderson campus. 11 Sunset Way, Henderson, Nevada, 89014. And do yourself a favor. Call in advance. Call 702-968-6615 and set up your appointment with a SHIP. Even if if you're currently on uh, a Medicare insurance right now, go there. You might find a better deal. You might find something that's more matched to what you need. Plans are changing in 2017. Deductibles, uh, co-pays, everything will change uh, for most people. So you may as well take a screening and see what's going to be the best. Exactly. And and you guys, there's going to be bigger changes in 2020. So get yourself set up um, to um, do what's best for you. Everybody's an individual. Everybody has their own personal needs. Uh, Leanne, I really appreciate you coming in today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for having uh, for having me out. It's great to be here. Thank you.